All right, so um, we're going to be moving into our last lesson here for Unit 7. I'm sorry, Unit 12. Um, we're going to see how factoring and trig identities can be used to solve equations. It comes up once in a while, so um, let's go ahead and write down example 1, please. Um, let's go ahead and do this. I think I'll cover up the bottom half here so I have a little more space underneath to work with if I can. <clears throat> okay, so let's use our identities. I'm going to replace cosecant with 1 over sine, right? And this, what does this become if I simplify it? It does, right? Cosine over sine is cotangent. So we're going back to those identities that we used back in the first half of unit 12. So I replaced cosecant with 1 over sine, right? And then cosine over sine is cotangent. Okay? Wait, how? Wait, how is it cotangent? That's just what cotangent is. It's cosine over sine. Oh, okay. It's one of our identities on that big sheet that I gave you back at the beginning oh, okay. of 12. Um, so if you have those big sheets, you know, you might want to have them ready for you to use today if you don't remember these off the top of your head. Um, anyway, so at this, once you got there, you just solve it like normal, okay? Um, the answers to this one would be x equals... Um, 150 and 330. Now, I'm skipping a lot of steps here because I don't want to drag this out too long and get you guys stuck on the old stuff. You guys know how to solve this, right? You would do the reciprocal, and then you would change it to tangent and use your unit circles, right? Um, I don't want to focus on that. What I want to focus on is using the identities to rewrite the expression, okay? Any? You guys ready for the next one? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Next one. Cotangent. Wait, so that was the answer. Well, yeah, I, I wrote the final answers, but I didn't show my work. So cotangent over cosine x equals 2. All right, so anybody got? Yes, sir. Yeah, I think there's some in that red cabinet if you want to get some. Um, anyway, what would you guys, any suggestions here about what I can rewrite here? Okay, we can rewrite cotangent as... Okay. Now what would you guys have me to do? Multiply the little denominator, right? We have the big fraction here. And this little fraction on the inside has a denominator that we want to get rid of. So I'm going to multiply the top of the big fraction and the bottom of the big fraction by sine. So these cancel, right? And now I'm left with what on the top? Cosine. And one on the bottom, sine, sine and cosine, right? And then what? We can cancel those, and that leaves me with what? One over sine. So then you would do the reciprocal, and that'd be one half. You got it. So 1 over sine equals 2. So then I'm going to show my work up here because I'm running out of space. But if I do the reciprocal on the left, I get sine, right? And if I do the reciprocal on the right, I get half, right? Okay. And then from there, you would solve it like normal. Okay. So I'll, I'll just put the answers. Um, X for that would be uh, same 150 and 30. Now, you guys probably would have to take a little more time to figure that out using the circle and not that I'm just giving you the answers. So the point here is I want you guys to be able to rewrite it and get it to a place where you have just a normal trig equation that you can use your unit circle with to solve. Okay? 
So, is ready? Can I race? Sure. Okay. Here's some student practices. Tavier, what do I replace up here? Um, so, Yes. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry about being creepy. All right, next. Connor, what's next? <coughs> the signs cancel, so now I have this. And then I got Tammy. What's next? <laughs> Divide both sides by a negative one, right? And Abel, what's next? And what do you get? Good. There you go. So, how did you get to Tammy? That's, That's a different us. problem. Yeah. Don't give the answer. All right, next one. Don't hurt. Um, Pearl's gone today. Let's talk to Sydney. Sydney, what do we replace? Um, With what? <laughs> ah. No, good guess. I still give you a point, but let me see if Najib does. What what would I replace sine over cosine with? That's correct. Now that's weird because usually we change everything to sine and cosine, right? But when you're solving equations, the goal is not to um, necessarily get sides to match. It's really about getting it down to one thing, right? Instead of two things, jump down to one so we can actually solve it, right? That's the goal there. Um, so Cameron, where does tangent equal rad 3 over 3? Okay, so that's how you can use identities. Um, there's a ton of identities, too. Um, there's, there's just a ton of ideas you can use to solve equations. I'm only focusing on these ones, but there's, there's actually quite a few. Huh? Which one? 30 and 210. All right, so that's that's one thing. That's how you can use identities to solve. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at factoring strategies to solve. Um, go ahead and write down example two, number one, please. Najib asked a, asked a good question. <laughs> Najib asked a good question. He said, can we just solve these the way we did in the last one by using the identities? Well, Maybe you could, maybe you couldn't. Um, I don't know if it's going to work here very well. Um, my So here's the thing. I, on this test, um, I'm just going to tell you in the directions explicitly. Use identities to solve. Use factoring to solve. Um, the reason for that is because this is new to you guys, and you can't tell. I can look at these, and I can know what strategy to use just because I've seen them so much. It's like, Oh, that's a factoring question. I can already see it. Um, for you guys, you're just getting used to it. With practice, you'll get there too. But for now, I'm just going to say use that and use that. So, yeah, what's up? Monday. Yep. <laughs> Today is 12.8. I misnumbered our notes. Today is supposed to be called 12.8. Okay. So, here's the thing with using factoring strategies, you guys. Uh, when you're trying to use a factoring strategy, the first thing that you need to do, and I'm going to write down some steps. There's not many steps, but it's nice to know. The first thing you want to do is, you know, you could do that. Um, you actually could do that. You actually could. I'm not going to do that, and then I'll tell you why at the end. But, but that's not bad. All right. So, um, you're going to move everything to one side. So you're saying that's the Mauser way instead of the Well, I'll answer you why I'm not going to do um, what Alondra said. There's a reason for it. 
All right, move everything to one side. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to minus this on both sides. Um, oops. Now, you can't actually combine this with this. They're just not like terms. So we're going to go ahead and just write them on the same side there. So we have tan x, sin x, and now we have minus radical sin x, right? Radical 3 sin x. And what do I have on the other side? Zero. So move everything over to one side. That's your first step. Just subtract it over or add it over, whatever. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to factor. Now, at this point, I'm going to have to ask you guys to remember stuff. What factoring strategy would I use here? Difference of squares, GCF, or the trinomial method? And it's a GCF. What do they have in common? You can't use the trinomial method unless you see at least two plus or minus signs in there, right? Because you need three terms. This is actually considered to be one term. This is not two terms. It, if they were connected by a plus, then you would have three terms. All right, so this is actually a GCF one. So they have what in common again? Sign. I'm going to factor that out. So I'm going to take out what they have in common. And what's going to be left inside? If I divide this by sine x, what's going to be left here? And if I divide this by sine, I'll be left with? Good. And then we do something that's called the zero product property that we did way back in factoring days. You set each piece equal to zero. Remember that? You set each factor equal to zero. So those are your three steps. Going to always be the same. The factoring strategy is not always going to be the same. Sometimes it will be DCF. It could be difference of squares or trinomial. But there it is. So move everything to one side, factor, zero product. And from there, you guys should be able to solve these. So like, for example, where does sine equal zero? Use your unit circles. Zero. And? Three, six, Three sixty is coterminal. One eighty. I didn't ask for an interval, so we'll just stick with zero to three sixty. Now over here, what would I have to do to solve? Yes, put the radical three back over here now, and that gives me and an x equals radical three. And now we can get the other two answers, which are 16 and 240, right? OK. So now Alondra had suggested a strategy to us. It's a good strategy, but there's a problem with it. Do you see what it is? Didn't get the 0 and 180. Now, what happens is if you just divide both sides by sine, what happens to the sign? It goes away, but doesn't it matter? Yep. It gives us the answers, doesn't it? So when you're solving trigonometric functions, um, and actually anytime you solve by factoring, it's better to factor because you don't lose information. If you divide both sides by a variable, you could lose information. So she wouldn't be wrong, she just wouldn't have the entire solution. So that's why we like to not divide a factor out on both sides. All right, so our, our steps are going to be move everything to one side, factor, zero product. Um, let's do another one. Go ahead and uh, write down number two, please. So this time, you guys, I kind of want you to go through the steps a little bit. So the first step is this. I want you guys to move everything to one side. Step one, move everything to one side. Go ahead. You're doing number two right now. I'll give you a second, and then I'll have you check your answers with a neighbor, and then I'll call in. Tanya, what what are you? What did you do first? I 
So you combine sine, and how did you do that exactly? Okay, so that's going to leave me with what, Tanya? Equal one, right? All right, cool. Thank you, Tanya. How's about Justin? What would you have us to do next, sir? Cool. The one doesn't combine with anything, right? <laughs> Okay, so that's the end of step one, right? We said we move everything to one side. What's step two? Factor it. So this is a trinomial, right? So that, you know, if you use the box or the reverse foiling method, whichever you prefer, go ahead and factor that out, and I'll call on you in just a second. All right, tell me what you got. All right, so I got two sine x plus one, and then sine x minus Okay. I think I agree. Looks good. All right, last one is, uh, well, I guess I'll ask you. Brooklyn's not with us. Melanie, what's our last step? That's right. It's called zero product property. So go ahead and do your zero product property and solve them if you haven't done so already. I saw some of you guys did that. Alondra. Um, when you set this equal to zero and, and you got the, the sine by itself, right? What, what did you get? You got sine equals what? One half? One half? Negative one half. Negative one half. And then, um, Julissa, when you took this one and set it equals zero and got sine by itself, what did you get? Sine x equals Okay, cool. And then from there, we're ready for some answers. Um, so, Nora. I'll let you do the honors here. What would you get for the negative half one? And then this one? Okay. Cool. And once again, we're just sticking with 0 to 360 here. We're not going beyond that interval. All right. So that was a guided practice, right? I'm walking you through it step by step. Um, I do want to throw some more at you guys here just to give you a little additional practice before we wrap things up. So here's two for you. Go ahead and uh, we're using factoring, right? So the, the, I'm going to give you probably about 15 minutes to mess around with these guys here.